Hey guys, I'm going to be showing you the 2015 Ford Transit 350. And first, let's go for a quick ride. Okay. Let this nice UPS driver go by. Make sure, yes, we're in the right mode. Tiptronic for a second. This thing has Tiptronic um, so you can go through the gears and that would be the M right here which is really cool. We could also do a quick freeway drive uh, so if you've read the ad this thing runs and drives flawlessly uh, no issues um, that I can speak of no peeps no squeaks no pings, no dings. I don't know what else to say. No burrs, no gurrs, no rumbles, no mumbles. Go ahead, sir. Uh, you know, the other day, me and my girlfriend were going through um, the process of looking up issues online. I guess I'm gonna have to go first. In San Mateo, it's always a little bit of uh, a little bit of a game of chicken. I guess they do live over there. Anyway, so we are going over all of the sort of words that you can use online to describe an issue. Um, and sort of the importance of those words when describing the issue. If you, if you say it's a rumble versus a grumble when you're describing a rear-end issue or something like that, you, I don't know, just kind of funny. Uh, make sure this camera's set okay. I guess I have to... Okay, cool. So anyways, um, good driving vehicle all around. Um, one thing that is... Is this on or off? Uh, one thing that uh, it does have is one of the parking sensors is out in the back and it gives a fault over here. So. Um, I can check that with my code reader and uh, determine which one. Um, they also could be dirty, uh, is, is another thing. Um, 138,000 miles on it. Um, I put it in the Craigslist ad, and I guess when I put it on, the, put it on Facebook, it didn't uh, register. Also, it's really difficult to click on links from Facebook, so it is what it is. Sorry, Sorry for all the Facebook users. All right, so um, as you can see, this seat is sitting in the um, sort of backwards position. It could also be moved back. These um, sort these uh, uh, 360 seats and these vans work out really well because in the older vans, there just wasn't that much room to be able to maneuver a seat backwards. So this is really nice. Um, you know, depending on if you're one person using this or two or three or four or five or six, because it can hold up to six people. If you guys are down to share a bed, three and three, doable, a little crazy, uh, but doable. Four, very comfortable. Two, luxuriously comfortable. And one, a little depressing. Just kidding. Um, so there we go. Uh, so if you were one person, you could just keep this in the backwards position. Um, I wouldn't imagine two people wanting to do this, but it's super easy to move this around, which is good. This seat also has a um, a swivel as well, which I always have to question, why do you need a swivel on the driver's seat? But hey, it's there, it's installed, which is good news for everyone. Um, something I didn't note is this has like the upgraded stereo system, so it has the outdated auxiliary cord, which some people use, I use it and it has a USB thing as well. So it's got a lot of bells and whistles, which is a heck of a lot more than a cargo van would have, a lot of cargo vans. Uh, do they have the swing up the manual um, windows anymore? I don't know. Garage door opener, rear AC slash rear heat. So if people were sitting back there, they could have their own heater slash AC, so dual. Of course, everyone who knows what a, uh, what a uh, 350 Transit is, XLT, so this is the biggest, baddest one. Um, and it's got a lot of goodies on it, which is, which is really cool. Cruise control works, AC blows cold, um, engine transmission run flawlessly, 
Um, no, no issues mechanically speaking as far as we're concerned. I'm just going to, did I bring my wallet? Did I bring my wallet? I did. I'm actually being a naughty boy and I'm actually on my way to Home Depot um, to grab some stuff and I figured what other better thing to do than to take the transit on the freeway, show you guys a nice little freeway test drive. You're gonna be probably taller than me, so you'll sit like this probably. <laughs> I'm 5'7", so if everyone, and the camera is on my head, so if, if people are wondering how this feels like to be uh, uh, average height, uh, well, let's face it, average height for a female nowadays. <laughs> uh, meaning like, you know, I'm short. That's the joke, guys. That's the joke. Um, okay. So anyways, I really uh, am running out of things to talk about here. Power mirrors, power doors, serious uh, radio, um, lots of other stuff, cruise control. Let's see, turn it on. And we'll show you cruise control, folks. Set it to 60. 61. There we go. Cruise control. And we're going to press the brake and get out of cruise control. Power mirrors. These do have the built in blind spot mirrors, which thank God that's happened because I can't believe they didn't have blind spot mirrors in older vehicles. I don't understand it. It's got all the little daytime running light stuff. We're basically in. Uh, brand new car territory. I don't think there is anything a brand new car has that this doesn't. Uh, it's got keyless entry. It comes with two key fobs. Uh, hold on one second. Yes, I am recording. Oh my god. For a second, I thought I wasn't recording. You guys know how that's like. Um, Tiptronic, 12 volt. I guess that's it. That's about all. Um, so dualies in the back, uh, sliding door entrance, back door entrance. Um, so anyways, I'll shut up for a second. Okay, so anyways, uh, done with that. Uh, the nice thing about this thing is it's got the dually rear wheels, which um, allows it to have more payload. So what, if you don't know what payload means, it means you're capable of carrying more uh, on the vehicle. It also adds to the towing as well because you can have more tongue weight on the towing, so on and so forth. This has basically the strongest axle in the back, the best leaf springs, the strongest shocks. Um, just a nicer, heavier duty vehicle, which if you are gonna put a house on a vehicle, you'd want the payload to be nice and strong. That being said, the, uh, the build quality and the build style is very lightweight built. So there's a, um, a metal studs, which are basically like a skeleton of metal. I don't know if you guys know metal studs construction. So instead of wood construction, there's metal studs, which you know, it means that it's not gonna rot. These are, this is galvanized steel. So, you know, it's basically gonna be like that forever. Um, and uh, plywood, eighth inch plywood board on top of it in certain areas. There is some wood and obviously in the cladding of the metal, but the, uh, the, frame, the, the construction of it is, is metal. Um, so, um, that's the build style of this. Um, there's also, um, the floor is insulated. It's, it's basically, uh, they, you know, uh, I'm sure they had to take out a lot of, uh, w so one thing you have to do when you get a cargo van, that's, you know, that's why a lot of people don't, um, convert cargo vans is because there's a tear out process. You have to tear the, the, ca the stuff of the cargo van out. It's also more expensive. And, um, I, you know, some people don't like windows. I actually happen to like windows. I'm guessing a lot of people do. And, you know, the fact that there's not a lot of cargo vans out there, the people that want the windows are going to want this one. But anyways, 
The windows are cool because they really allow for a lot of natural light to happen and it gives you just a better experience when you're camping and you're going out into like national parks and stuff like that you're gonna obviously be spending a good amount of time inside of the van naturally because you know why else would you have a van you're gonna want to eat you're gonna want to sleep you're gonna want to um, you know use the bathroom and and, uh, and uh, you know um, stuff like that so basically there's a window for everything y'all there's a window in the back window on the side there's a window in the kitchen and the window here at the door so um, you know it's kind of uh, the windows are naturally tinted and uh, they're kind of darker a lot darker outside you could see they're more tinted than the front obviously I'd, I'd say 40 or 50 percent tint and there is about um, and all the windows are blacked out with blackout curtains that I personally made. Yes, I can sew. Just kidding, I did it on a machine. Um, so I made the curtains. It had curtains. Um, obviously, the story of this is, is I got it in a trade um, for a 4x4 four four Chinook. And, um, and so basically, you know, it was built out when I got it. But when I got it, I did the things that I would naturally do to vehicles. So... Um, so basically that's that's that um i made the curtains for it it had curtains on uh these tracks that i deemed to be unacceptable so i i put them on um uh they're called uh, glide tape moldings um is that what they're called they're called they're called they're called uh yeah glide tape and, and glide tape tracks and stuff like that so basically it's a type of sort of an rv feature that um, makes it so that the curtains are uh, sort of closer to the window. I'm sure many of you have fast forward all of this talk and this mumbo jumbo. Maybe if you are still um, listening, you're probably very interested or very interested in what I have to say, um, which should be somewhat interesting, hopefully. Anyways, so um, blackout curtains is the deal. I'll talk a little bit about the build of this. This is basically very similar to an RV. This isn't your sort of uh, stripped down camper van with just a bed and like, you know, a place for your bike underneath it. This has got all the tanks. It's got all the city hookups, got all the camping ground hookups. Um, it's got solar panels. It's got a propane system on board. The tanks are underneath the vehicle so it's it uh, makes a lot of space um for your uh actually i'm supposed to be going in the other way um it has a lot all the tanks are underneath the vehicle that means the black water tank the gray water tank and the fresh water tank are all underneath the vehicle so that means that all of the there we go uh it frees up a lot of space for the interior portion, the stuff that has to be on the inside. Um, of course, if you're uh, familiar with, you know, basically any RV, most RVs are going to put all of their tanks underneath, especially the gray and the black water tank. And um, some will put the fresh water tank underneath. I know Road Truck does it and Pleasure Way does it. That's because they are sort of ruthless about creating all of the space uh, that they need inside. I'm actually going to go to the sort of far, the far side gallery, the far right side. Hello, sir. Um, anyways, did I just run this guy over? Okay, um, so it's got a full RV build. It's got all the amenities that an RV would have. Um, uh, in a, since the tanks are underneath the chassis, they have a heater strip. So each one of them has a sort of a 12 volt um, style heater strip that, uh, that heats them when you want it to, um, if you are driving in cold weather and don't want them to freeze. All right, I'm gonna go to this side that where nobody likes to park. And do, 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 do one of these numbers. Probably take up two spaces to say, hey, don't mess with me. Wow, you guys, that's an awning right there. Wow, that's a freaking awning right there. That is crazy. Somebody's awning flew off. 
Wow, a little A and E. He probably had it out. He, she, who knows? Who cares? Um, so I'm gonna put this underneath here so that the wind doesn't mess with it. Okay, cool. Um, hopefully you guys can hear me, but we'll do a quick walk around again. So um, somebody inquired about the paint. The paint's in overall really good shape. Um, you know, it still looks really nice and really luxurious. Uh, there are a couple of scratches, you know, as to be expected in these vehicles on some, some times that's just going to happen. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay. A little scratch there. Um, this is something else. Uh, let's see. I think that's... Um, there's some scratches somewhere, but overall, the paint's in really good shape. Whoop, whoop. Somebody stole some DVDs. Um, the solar, the solar does not hang off the van at all. It may look like that in some of the pictures, but it is basically very flush with the van. And on the outermost part of the van, it's about three or four inches off from the solar so that's cool um we'll show you some pictures of the undercarriage really nice no leaks no oil leaks ugh, that i can see hopefully i haven't done any research on the catalytic converters of these but hope oh, they're up here so they're really hard to steal, which is good. My friend was telling me that the 350s are good candidates for electrical conversion. So the 350 is a pretty good, um, pretty good setup if you want to do electric down the road. And I'm sure they do that because they can hold a lot more weight. These are electrical outlets that function when you have the inverter on or when you have shore power on. So when the RV has electrical, then you can have electricity over there. These are the parking sensors. You know, if I was to guess which one is bad, it would be this one, I would say, because it's a little bit misaligned. So that would make sense that this would be the bad one. Um, really heavy duty ladder. I was trying to look up how much these cost and it's close to $1,000. Um, but it's an all aluminum ladder that's in really good shape. And uh, it's got an exterior shower. Uh, this is your hookup for your RV. Um, there's some scratches over here. And then this is the city water connection. So if you want to um, plug into a city water, this is where you would do it. And you would bypass the pump. Uh, dually rear wheels. Um, looks like the drive shaft was replaced at some point. And um, these are the tanks. So that's the black water tank, the gray water tank, and the fresh water tank is over here. And all of the tanks have uh, level sensors on them. You could see the level sensors right there. So you could see, and they're all put on with really good bracketing, I would say. Pretty good bracketing. There's the spare tire over there, and there's the hitch carrier over there. And you could see some of the tubing to the AC and the heater system back here. All right, so we are going to enter the van in the, in the way that we will most likely enter the van, which is the side door. All right, there we go. A little handle right here. Uh, the area above the seats has been kept open. Uh, you know, it hasn't been closed off, which I actually love that choice. I think it's kind of crazy when people start adding storage here. You can add more storage here, of course, but you would have to sort of tuck your head in to go in. This is a uh, curtain. One of the, this is the style curtain that was there before. This is the only place that I chose to keep this curtain, and that's because this type of curtain moving uh, motion, um, it, uh, and it, I put snaps here so it holds the curtains together. I was gonna put a snap here, I still can, but I figured this is gonna be where 
we enter and exit the place. Um, this comes with one of these, this is probably one of the best sort of um, reflector. It's custom made for transits. And obviously it's custom made for a lot of vehicles, but these are really high grade. Um, obviously worn out and used, but it just shows how sort of good it is and reliable. Look at this. Um, so uh, I didn't list this in the ad, but this has like a sort of a cable HDMI feature. So there was a TV at one point here. Um, and basically there's a there's the same sort of outlet over there and you can plug in your laptop and watch TV here. But honestly, I felt that the TV was useless and I really wanted to be able to walk here without having to sidestep this, this uh, monitor that's sitting here. So I took the TV out, it's basically mounted here. You can have it, I don't really care, it's a smart TV, but whatever. Honestly, you shouldn't be watching TV, so. Um, there's an awning up here, uh, outdoor light. This is basically the, um, where is the exterior light? Exterior light, yay. Um, so exterior light, interior lights, um, the bathroom fan slash uh, light on, the fan um, sort of master key there, and this is the kitchen light. So that's all the stuff. And I will basically turn this on. So more snaps, snap a lot, I guess. Um, these are the curtain glide tapes that I was telling you about. Again, just sits a lot more flush. Um, there's probably a snap that I should put here. Uh, but actually, this is the reason why I did it. It's because there is no need for a snap there. Um, anyways, you can have like a million snaps, but I don't want to just screw a million holes in here. So I opted to make just the necessary amounts of snaps. You could really get carried away with snaps, I'll tell you that. Some flooring, flooring stuff. This is a vinyl sheet flooring that I actually often use in my builds. It is a very lightweight thing. It's very easy to clean, although it's very dirty right now. Um, and it doesn't show scratches or nicks very much. So it's a really good setup. Um, butcher block counter, Dometic stove. You gotta wait for the propane to go through the line. This is my propane detection. Okay, well, let's show you the propane where the propane is because I need to open up the propane tank. There it is. So this is where the propane sits. Look at that. This is, um, um, what do you call it? Uh, diagnosis in action. No propane, you open up the propane tank. Um, so I basically, uh, uh, this wasn't uh, tied down, which I think is kind of unreasonable so I basically made tie downs for it and I put a strap for it so this propane tank is strapped in and so basically now turn it on there's one can't see it because it burns so clean and that's two and do not ever use this for heating says the RV manufacturer oops sorry there we go Cool, I've adjusted it. If you guys have been annoyed that I've not been, anyways. Okay, so um, this has the automatic lighting feature. This is actually a really cool looking stove. It's just, a, it's a lot better than um, the average stove that Dometic wants to sell you. So turn that off, turn that off. Really nice one, obviously stainless steel. This is another window with glide tape. Of course, that window's in the way, but this just shows you This just shows you sort of the effect that windows have. Imagine there's a beautiful creek there or something like that and you're doing dishes. It sort of sets you in the, um, in the, whole, in the whole mood of the whole thing. You know, if you're out and about, I don't know. I mean, I guess you can open up your cargo van door and just like sort of look out there constantly, but it's nice to just be able to look around and see a panorama of things. So, butcher block, really nice sink. Another great thing that I look for in vans. And if not, I try my darndest to build it into it. Um, big sinks are a must. Anybody putting a small sink in here it should just stop it. Stop it right now. This sink is really nice as well. This is 
really strong uh, a really strong sink it's not you can kind of tell that deep noise it means that this thing is thick thick gauge metal and it's got a couple different strainers here um, which is great because if one strainer starts to like not catch things it's like not that it's a big deal in a, in a van or RV and um, we have a built-in butcher block I mean it makes sense to have this right because they have to cut it out so why not use it and then a cool strainer that goes in here um, it's got regular water here's my that's the I don't know if you could see that but that's the uh, water pump and now we got better water la 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 da. okay turn that off and then we also have filtered water filtered water reverse osmosis RO little look at all the drawers all the drawers have this nice latch thing that Sportsmobile uses, which I really like. Drawers everywhere. This is the electrical section right here. Um, that's the DC to DC charger. That's the um, solar charger, reverse osmosis, little electrical thing right there, if need be. And yeah, there we go. Um, okay, uh, bathroom. Bathroom, we have this door that opens up. There we go. And um, the light for here. I'm not the biggest fan of the light being turned on with the fan. You could always change them out, but that's kind of how it is. I guess if you are using this, you're going to either be pooping, peeing, or showering, which in case, in most of those cases, you'll need a fan. Fiberglass tub that's made for a Class B van. So this is an insert that was probably bought as a that was probably bought um, uh, from like a RV manufacturing site, uh, and this is this is the mold, and they basically built out the tile around it. So this is actually real tile, which is surprising and interesting and cool, and it's just cocked at the seams. So, and that's a computer fan. Um, that's what looks like a computer fan to me. But you know what? It's not a computer fan. They're always so anemic. This is a really strong fan. So and these are just RV. Um, this is an RV faucet, an RV toilet. Um, this is a Dometic. The flush is back here. And then it's got a... I'm trying to see if it has this other thing where it just fills the bowl up instead of just... Okay, so basically this has that, if you just um, open it up halfway, then it opens up the valve and lets water in, and then you can fill up the bowl so you could do your business. And then if you go all the way, it flushes it. And then this is a little bidet thing. That doesn't seem, I think you gotta, you gotta flush and press the handle for this one kind of funny that's my phone going down there and this is boat decking material so I still got you okay good that's boat decking material it's basically for non-slipness and so on and so forth this is a 12 volt fridge you open it up from over here and basically just turns on um like that and yeah it's 12 volts which is really nice because anytime you have an AC accessory, it makes it so that um, I'm not actually for, because I'm not going to be in this thing afterwards. I'm just turning it off. But it makes it so that it's 30% uh, more efficient when you have 12 volts. That's why 12 volt stuff's more expensive. This is a uh, microwave. You'll notice, Charbel, why is the microwave on? We're not plugged into anything. I'll say, well, young grasshopper our inverter is on and when our inverter is on um, the uh, power panel gets electricity from the inverter so all of the um, all of the wonderful items that we have here that work off of electricity including all of our power outlets work as well so the microwave just turns on let's see I don't use my Chris but here it is Okay, that's how we know I don't use microwaves. What? What? What's going on? Popcorn? Can we make popcorn? Da, 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 da. Okay, well, it's getting power. It's 
start. D, it's like the thing on. Okay, so I guess the door needed to be opened and closed for whatever reason, but you could see it's on, which is nice. Now, um, yeah, my credit has freaked me out, but there it is. It's on. So, thanks for the ignore. Okay, yeah, I don't use microwaves. Anyways, this is the bed, you guys. Obviously, you've been seeing me talk about this, and it's on the ad, and it's like probably the coolest feature of this vehicle. Now, how do you get on the bed? You can basically jump up there, or I do have a ladder that came with it that hooks on here, and you can crawl up like a civilized person. Um, I was gonna make a step up here, because truth be told, I mean, I just, you know what, actually, I do know. The ladder, when it's all the way in the upwards most position, will, and I'll just pop it up right now. Um, it's kind of like that Austin Powers slow motion forklift running the guy over thing, but um, it takes, you know, what is it, 25 seconds to go up, and you can kind of see it right there, and there it is. Um, basically, the bed, uh, the bed ladder hooks onto here, and um, you know you can crawl up it. And when you're not using it, you just throw it up there. And basically, you know, it doesn't go all the way up, so it won't crush the ladder. And the ladder is not very thick, so that's where the uh, the ladder stows away. There's four of them, and they're all in series, so that one's always going to be the slowest, but they always catch up. And you can kind of just see that. And it sort of does the reverse order. This one lands first. So yeah, the ladder just sits up there when you're not using it. I do have the ladder. Um, this is the dinette area. And this also turns into a bed as well. There we go. Um, there is two types of curtains here. There is this curtain thing that you know, it, it does a pretty good job. It goes all the way. And I also made this one as well. Again, we can put snaps everywhere. It takes me like literally a second to put snaps and really put things in place. But sometimes I think, do I really need a snap here? Um, when the sun shines through these, it's really awesome. Um, they have, oh, it goes, I put one from one side and, and one from a different side. That's just me trying to be quirky and funny. Um, how does this work? Am I going to break something here if I do this? Somebody probably has a transit van. They're like, idiot. Okay, here we go. We figured that out. So I guess like, like that and like that. Okay, here we go. Um, all right, well, let's sit down here. Um, this is the RV fuse box, speakers. This is the diesel heater, part of the diesel heater. This is how you turn on the diesel heater here. Um, this is the tank heater strip. And this is the master switch for the diesel heater. So you, got, you just see how that turned on and off. So it's a master switch. That's the master switch for the inverter. A little smoke, det uh, little carbon monoxide detector. You have an outlet up there. Um, this is the water heater. This is the uh, water heater for the everything for here. So you have hot water coming out of here, hot water coming out of there, and hot water coming out of the external shower area. Um, the uh, vehicle back AC slash back um, slash back heater blows out of the ground and it also blows out of here just there, those two. Um, and you see right there is where you plug in your laptop so that you can send a signal to the hypothetical TV that's over there. These are more drawers. More drawers, uh, that's not a drawer. And then this is the biggest wardrobe, which everyone likes to see. Um, you can see how there's plenty of room for the hangers to go there, so this closet's really big. And this is a really nice fan, it's got, um, you know, it it, um, it it opens and closes automatically. It opens and closes based on temperature automatically. It does intake or exhaust, and it has multi-speed. So it does everything, which is really cool. 
Um, so basically, when you guys are ready to make this into a bed, this table pops out of this right here and it lays on here, lays on here. And then there's two extra, um, two extra pieces that I made. Basically this one and this one. And they basically, uh, they basically cover the sort of what, what this one does. And I should probably do it, but I'm really lazy. And so why did I make two tables? Why did I make two extra ones instead of one? Because I want it to be easy to handle to put one over here, one put the other over here. And because if you did want to make a table, maybe a lagoon table for something, you can use it all the way over there and have like a dining area or a seating area. Because I know a lot of people were asking about maybe you turning this into a storage area and having this be the bed. Um, so on and so forth, which brings me to another thing. Um, this win these windows, these window coverings close. I know they look like they probably don't cover much, but they do. I made them specifically for that. They close really nicely. Um, I was gonna add Velcro here, but I really don't like Velcro. You know what I like? Snaps. I like snaps. Um, I just. I tried to sew Velcro into something and it had tape on it and it didn't work and anyways. Um, yeah, there we go. So uh, one really good option for these back windows other than just snapping these to make them go all the way would be to have Reflectix cutouts all the way for the back. But I just, you know, I felt like I should do something a little bit better than just Reflectix. So I made curtains for it, yay. This is the remote control for, probably have to put these batteries, there's no batteries in here, but that's the mic, uh, remote control for that fan. So you can control it. Um, this is the, obviously the water pump switch. This will um, tell you the levels of everything. So it's gray water, black water, fresh water, battery level, and LPG which I don't know how it can sense the LPG amount because it doesn't actually have an onboard propane tank. So I would actually just ignore the LPG readout. You could always put a gauge on that tank itself, which are really cheap anyways. This is a light switch for all of that. And now that we're looking up there, I put a little net up there because this is part of the bed. So because these cushions are smaller than this one, when you put it all together, there's a little bit of space left, so this has to actually take up that space. Um, so anyways, I built this out like this, so you can just sort of put it away. Now, you have to think of everything when you're building a camper van. Where does this go? Well, I have an answer to that. This is gonna pop up there. And this table is only a half, it's a half inch. Um, so this table can't weigh more than realistically eight pounds, maybe nine pounds. And so I, I have a little bracket that was supposed to come in the mail, but the delivery driver delivered it to the wrong address. Oh, shoot. Mine bet. All right, um, okay, so the delivery driver delivered it to the wrong place, but basically it would have like a little thing that pops in, and then once you pop it here, there would be a latch that pops it closed, or that um, makes it uh, stay up there. And so basically that's how you would keep that table away. And that would give you basically the option, you know, to walk from here. Now, underneath the bed, obviously it takes up space. Now, this thing, um, full height is about, on 5'7", there's about this much more, so 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, Underneath this bed is about an inch above me, so it's 5'8". So no matter what, you are going to have to do one of these numbers, get low if you're tall, to, uh, to, to walk back here, which is fine because back here you're basically going to be sitting down to... Uh, you're basically going to be sitting down to eat or whatever. You're going to be eating or sleeping here. So anyways, I think we're basically about it. These are 
the cabinets above. These are huge cabinets. You can big, put b uh, big Costco style um, uh, cereal boxes here and lots of big stuff here. Um, underneath, we'll open this up. I put these handles here. Underneath, there's a decent amount of storage underneath this one. Um, that's the diesel heater, diesel tank. So you fill the diesel tank about right there. And there's uh, not a very good amount of storage here, probably just like elbow deep, some extra RV fittings. And this is the RV uh, heater slash AC. We'll crawl up to the roof. Show you guys the roof. Uh, three big solar panels, about 275 watts each, all on a frame. And the frame is bolted in uh, basically into the main RV um, mounting points. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it. That's all I have for you. Um, I think um, I think this is a really good van. Um, it's really awesome. It's for, for the people that want something new and something reliable and uh, something spacious and something reasonably conspicuous. Um, this is an awesome van and it drives like a dream if you're going to be doing a lot of state stuff like state parks, traveling, lots of miles on the road. This is the one to do it in. And, and just super comfort, super luxury. Um, it just really doesn't compare, you know? I know, I know like, you know, I have lots of posts about, you know, older RVs and stuff like that, but man, a, a newer RV really is something else. Anyways, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Sorry if I rambled on too much and um, have a good day. Peace.